Hello everyone. Today, in this tutorial, I am going to show you guys, how to interface, TFT display with SDM32. This is going to be a long ride, so buckle up. Kindly pay attention to every detail, there are a lot of settings involved. I am using HX347G display, and it is 240 by 320 TFT display, as shown in the picture. Before starting this tutorial, I want to mention that, this is a port from MCU Friends' Arduino code. I have made some changes to make it compatible with Cube MX. Let's start by creating the project in Cube IDE. I am using STM32 F103 controller. The method should work with others too. I have tested it on F446 and F407 controllers. Ok, first things first. Set up the RCC and serial wire debug. We need the delay in microseconds, so I am using timer 1 to do that. I am assuming, I don't need to explain this part. You can check my other video, if you don't know how to use delay in microseconds. Here comes the main part. All these TFTs have 8 data pins, and 5 control pins. It will be good for you, if you choose the port pins of any one port, from 0 to 7, to connect them, in the same order, to the LCD data pins. But just to show you guys, how to program in the random cases, I will choose some of the pins as random. Here, I am choosing PB0, and PB1, and then 3456, to be connected, in the same order, to the LCD data pins. Then, PA5 to be connected to, LCD D7. And PA15, to LCD D2 pin. The connections are as follows. D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, D7. We have to select 5 control pins also. This is for reset then CS, then WR, then RS, and finally, RD is selected as input. The final setup of the pins is, as shown in the picture. Next, complete the rest of the setup for the clock. And once done, just click save. Now, we need to copy some library files, into the project folder. Just follow me. Let's just refresh the project once. Next, we need to include those files in our project. If you take a look at the functions.h file. These are all the functions, 
that you can use for the TFT. All the modification that you are required to do is in the user settings.h file. I forgot to include the functions.h file. Coming back to modification, first of all change the pins and ports according to your setup. Most of them are fine. Let's take a look at the connections once. LCD D7 is connected to GPIO A5, I need to change that. Here, you define the width and height of the LCD. Here, you need to uncomment the type of display you are using. I am using HX8347G, so that one is defined. Microsecond delay function is defined here. Change it accordingly, if you are not using timer 1. Here comes the most important part of the setup. I have even written everything in the comments, you can read it. Here, we are going to modify the write 8 function. First, we need to clear all the data pins. And to do that, we need to set the higher bits of BSR register. For example, to clear pins B3, B4, B8, and B9, we will write 1, to 3rd, 4th, 8th, and 9th, position, and shift it left, 16 times. So, in the GPIOB, BSSR register, I am going to write 1, in 0th, 1st, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th positions. Because these are the GPIOB pins, that are connected to LCD data pins. For GPIOA, only pins A2 and A15 are connected to the LCD data pins. So 1 is only written in the 5th and 15th position. Next, we need to write data to these pins. And to do so, we will write to the lower bits of BSSR register. Here, I have mentioned an example that, if LCD D4 is connected to B7, and LCD D6 is connected to B2. Then, in order to write the data, we need to select the fourth bit of data, because we are doing it for LCD D4. And then shift that bit by 3, to make it 7. That's where the D4 is connected. And similarly, to write to the LCD D6, we will first select the 6th bit of data. And this time, we will shift it to the right, by 4. That will be like, subtracting, and the final result would be 2. That's where the D6 is connected. In our actual case, the LCD D2 pin is connected to A15. So, in the GPIOABSSR register, we need to first select the second bit, and then shift it by 13, 
to make a total of 15. Also, LCD D7 is connected to A5. So, first we will select the 7th bit of the data. And then, we need to shift that bit to 5th location, so shift it right by 2. Next, coming to GPIOB. LCD D0 is connected to B0 pin, so we don't need to shift it anywhere. Similarly, other pins are also connected in a proper order, so, no shifting is required. That's why I told you to choose, and connect in order. It makes things, a bit easy. This was the writing data to the pins. Now, to read the value on the pins, we need to read, the input data register. Again, I have mentioned an example here. You can read it. Basically, unlike last time, where we selected the LCD pins first, here, we are going to select, the GPIO pins first. After selecting the GPIO pin, we will shift it, to make it equal to the LCD pin, it is connected to. You will get an idea of what I am talking about, in a while. Let's take B0 first. It is connected to D0, so we won't shift it. Same for the B1 also. Now, here, I have selected A15, and as it is connected to LCD D2, I am shifting it by 13, to the right. 15 minus 13, makes up 2. Next, B3, B4, B5, and B6 are connected to the respective pins, so no shifting is required. Now, in the end, I am selecting pin A5, and then shifting it by 2, in the left, to make it 7. Because, a5 is connected to LCD D7. This completes the important part of the setup. Next, you need to uncomment these lines, based on your clock frequency. Let's write the main function now. I am defining a variable, to store ID of the LCD. Next, we need to start the timer, for the delay to work. First of all, read the ID of the display, and store it in the variable, that we created. Give some delay. Next, initialize the TFT, with the ID. Then, I am writing some tests. Next, 
OK, print new str, prints the string in a row. Its parameters are, the row number, text color, the font type, that you can find in the fonts.c file. Size of the text, and the string itself. And, in the end, I am putting the display, in the continuous scrolling. Let's compile the code, and debug it. I am setting the live expression, to monitor the ID. So, I am getting correct ID here. I will continue the execution. You can see all the tests being performed by the display. Let's put this outside the while loop. And I will add a code to invert the display. Correct the size of the string. Also let's disable these. And run the program again. So the things are working as expected. This is it guys. These are some more functions, that you can use for now. Some of them are in tft.h file. I hope, you will get yours working too. I will make another video, for the tft displays, that use spi. This code might have some errors at the moment. I didn't test it thoroughly yet. You can download the code, from the link in the description.